Mati. The house, man. What the hell? What a cool house. <laughs> Come on. Well, thanks. Yeah, it's uh, early, um, uh, late 1800s. 18, it started construction in 1886, finished in the early 90s, 1890. Um, yeah, very cool. How old are your daughters now? You told me that they, she, they, they moved away, right? Yeah, so we bought the house after they moved out. Oh, that's um, good. Very convenient. Yeah, yeah sure. <laughs> we, made, we made room for, for them to come back home. Uh -huh. uh, but they both, uh, they're in their uh, mid-early 20s. Um, are they twins? No, they're not twins, no. no. I, my oldest is Maddie. She's 26. And my youngest is Caroline. She's 22. 26. How old are you, man? Yeah, I'm 53. Looking good, man. Looking yeah. good. Look at you. Well, you know, you try. <laughs> we try. Try to stay young. So very, very cool, man. And you have this whole basement towards these lot cars and some Christmas decorations. I saw yeah, that. yeah, yeah. We got some <laughs> Christmas decorations. We like to decorate for Christmas here. Christmas. The big Victorian house. You, you can't help but Right now we have some Halloween out. Uh, it's, we're close. It'll be close Halloween. Halloween. Yeah. A lot of fall decoration. Can right you now. tell me just a little bit about the history of the house and the neighborhood that you were telling me before? Yeah, so um, this, we live in... This used to be the capital of Ohio. And, right, yeah. yeah. Chillicothe was the first capital uh, of Ohio. It was the third capital of Ohio. There were some weird things that happened uh, before it moved to Columbus. And so uh, this street on 4th Street, a lot of these homes in this, in this area, we have a paper mill. Um, a large paper mill. Um, it was, used to be called Mead Paper. Now it's called Pixel. But um, these were a lot of the executive homes early on in the turn of the century. And so they're big brick, um, lots of square footage. And, uh, and for just two of us, it's probably a little too big, but uh, we get to have guests and uh, we enjoy that. Uh, but yeah, it's, uh, it's a cool neighborhood. We're a block from the middle of town, um, the, the courthouse and there's a lot of great things happening downtown here in Chillicothe. So uh, 25 years ago, we had a big fire and uh, destroyed one of the buildings. And about uh, 10, 12 years ago, they reconstructed it. And business has been booming ever since. It really was the, the center of the synergy of downtown coming back. And so now there are coffee shops. There's lots of downtown shopping. Um, we have a trolley that, that yeah. drives around town and you can get around on it. it it's it really is a lively place, and so that's why we wanted to move down here. We we used to live up on a up on the hill overlooking downtown, and my wife and I wanted to be downtown because we just we walk everywhere we go. We just really enjoy the the life downtown. So after the trauma of the fire, I think the community came together, and now they're more towards the the reparation and then yeah, preservation I, I, of the city. Yeah, I think that um, it took a little bit after the fire. I think nobody knew what to do. They were just kind of devastated, and uh, um, the local hospital, um, they decided that they wanted to, turn, it's a big building, and they wanted to turn it into kind of like a boutique hotel for the doctors to stay, and so they did this massive renovation, and it's, it's a beautiful building now, and it has, I think, 32 apartments okay. in it, and so they use it to, uh, to house interns, doctors, nurses that are working at the hospital uh, short term and long term, and and that that just has created a downtown life, a nightlife. Um, so we got some, we got a brewery that moved in. Well, we're staying here tonight. Yeah, there you go. We're staying here tonight. Yeah, uh, right on the corner is a great brewery called Fifty West. There you go. And uh, uh, they got a, they've got a good burger and. Uh, there you go. Look at um, this. And then, then <laughs> Old Capital Brewing um, is another uh, new place down the street. The Poor House. Yeah, we've got lots of good places to to eat and. Uh, and uh, find some good uh, good drink. Did you have to have a permit to build this track down down here? No, 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 no they, permit. Do they know about the track? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I, honestly, I would love to figure out how to become a club track. Honestly, okay. um, this isn't the perfect place to have a club track because it's kind of tight quarters. It is. Come um, on, have but, fun here. But it, uh, but it is a fun layout. So you have a four lane, Carrera digital track. Yes. Well, it's uh, digital, digital and analog. analog. So yeah. you, what kind of device do you use to? to, to... So I uh, originally built one for my YouTube channel mm -hmm. um, as a DIY. Okay. I like to get my hands dirty. I like to, to, to learn about things. And, and so I just kind of started doing some research and built my own digital converter and uh, put it out on, on the channel and it had a lot of traffic. And then um, Alex from Axelbox okay. reached out and said, hey, I'm putting together a four lane. Um, would you like to turn your track into four lane digital? And I'm like, yeah, I'll, I'll give it a shot. So I'm using the, uh, the Ultra 4 from Axelbox. For how long have you been involved with slot cars now? 
So is we that moved, something that started back in the day with H.O.? When? Well, you know, like every American boy between yeah. ages 8 of 12 <laughs> for Christmas, Santa Claus brings him a slot car track. And my brother, um, who's one of my best friends, uh, Dusty, we were, we were kids and we got a TCR track, okay. uh, Total Control Racing, which was the slotless slot car track. And we just wore, we wore it out. And um, when we were teenagers, we got into racing uh, RC cars. Our uncle had bought an RC car. Oh, I remember uh, those days. Kyosho, um, an Ultima, uh, four-wheel drive, and I thought that was the coolest thing. So we started racing those, and the local track closed after a couple years. And um, I, I loved your episode with uh, Joel Johnson. Joel Johnson, yeah. Because I like we idolized him when we were we were yeah, first in guy, the hobby. The guy's a myth. Yeah. Great, great, great guy. That was a great interview. But and so we never we never even thought about it. But we were moving into this house, and my buddy John Mark goes. We were looking at this whole, this whole room was empty, <laughs> nothing in it. And he said, this would be a great place to build a slot car track. <laughs> oh, God, then starts. <laughs> and, and so I started doing some research. So I, honestly, I've been in the hobby um, this, Feb, this coming February uh, 2025 will be three years. That's good. And what happened was um, I, I went to uh, Tom Thumb in Columbus, which uh, they had a big king track there. And I showed up there one day and I bought a, a Carrera starter kit and came home and put it on the floor and immediately called my brother and John Mark and said, get over here. This is awesome. <laughs> so we started out as a digital track, digital only, thought that's all we wanted to do. And we, uh, we drove down to Cincinnati after about a year. We drove down to Cincinnati and visited Bruce at, Cincy, at Cincy Slots, Slots yeah. on a race night. And um, I, uh, when I built the, the track, I started the YouTube channel. And I was like, I'm just going to post about my journey in this new hobby. Good. And I had no idea where it was going to go. I didn't know if it was going to last a couple videos and I was going to get tired of it. Um, but, you know, six, eight months in, I started this live stream on Tuesday nights. And more and more guys show up just to talk shop, like, you know, bench race. And we talk about slot cars. We help people in the chat. Um, it's been fun. But when we showed up, one of the guys, um, his name's Daryl, we walked in. No plans to race. We walk in and he says, Marty. I watch your channel. He's like, <laughs> I've got cars tuned, ready to go. And he made us race. And we had never raced no magnets. Like, well, we'd only been magnet racers okay. and um, in digital. So we'd never raced analog and we had never raced no magnets. The principle is the same. Yeah, but it's, it's a lot different <laughs> if you've never driven. So you show up at the racetrack to race and somebody throws a car you've never driven. Um, and we, we had a blast. It changed, it changed the channel. It changed my channel. We, I basically... We started pulling magnets out of cars. We started investing in learning how to tune a car. Okay. Um, and then that my my channel shifted. It was like I need to learn as much as I can. So then I start reaching out to people that have other channels in the hobby that are really good tuners. And so and then I've met people like John Albright out in California, who's mm -hmm. a great tuner, and he. Um, We've we've just met a lot of really good people. I've been trying to invite John to come to the store for, for almost three years now. He keeps promising me that he has a motorhome and is going to park in front of the store. So I keep trying. I'm going to keep, keep trying. working on yeah, it. Yeah. I think you're I think you're close. You're good. Yeah. Good. Yeah. So, but that, but that's how we got in, and we just we started with a digital track, and after that first night, immediately bought a bunch of track. It's like started looking for it on Facebook Marketplace. Like we got to get this this layout builder bigger. So we built a. Uh, this table is 30 by 8. Jesus, yeah. 8, and, yeah. And uh, we've got a little extension here. And I noticed that you already have a lot of controller handles. Nothing's original anymore here. But Nothing, yeah. Yeah, no. so we have some defocus going on. There's a slotted controller, a lot of decoration. There's some sort of a plugs over there that I don't even know what it starts with. So, so this, <laughs> I, I was going to change my scenery for my channel. Okay. So I usually work off the bench with this in the backdrop. Yeah. And so I thought... By the way, the bench that you guys see online on his channel, that seems like very clean. It's just a mess. It is a mess, So man. many tools. It's it's a mess. I always talk about how messy that nobody can okay, see it. Okay, good. Um, I, yeah, I don't, I don't hide that fact. <laughs> but I thought I would set up here, and I built kind of a master station so I can plug my controller in and I can move from lane to lane. Ah, okay. That's so, that, so that's what that's going on. But um, And then I put a video out about it. Because there were other guys that were like, hey, how did you do that? Okay. And so then... So they want to control the, the car from me. Yeah. Right. And so I can move from lane to lane, never move so, spots. But it, it's one of those things where sometimes a lot of guys, they don't, how, they don't know how the track works. They don't understand the basic principles of a slot car track, positive and negative. And yeah. a lot of guys are scared of electricity. 
And I guess I'm not smart enough to be scared of it, so I just dig in and try to figure it out. <laughs> That's good. So do you have people coming here? Is that like a small group or a um, form a club? I have I have a handful of guys. Is that, your brother still coming? Oh, yeah. Okay, good. Every week. Uh -huh. Is yeah, it a younger usually, brother or older brother? Um, a younger brother. Younger brother. Um, yeah, we, we usually, Sunday nights. Um, Sunday nights, all right. We usually come in, and do some laps. Um, most of the time it's tuning. We're just working on cars and uh, we we got invited to, to go up to Cloverleaf for the, the NSR Eastern Nationals. Mm -hmm. And so I've been working on some NSR cars for that. Oh, and, that's why I saw some custom painted ones. Yeah. yeah. And so that's what we're working on for that. And, and that'll be a new experience for us. Have low expectations of, <laughs> of how we'll do. but Well, it's when, when you walk into a group that is formed so, for so many years and people know how to handle, know how to, the yeah. cars are gone, it's, it's going to be hard. It's going to yeah. be tough. Yeah, we have no expectations. But We're just going to have fun. It's a learning experience. It's a definitely a learning experience. Yeah, for sure. But it, it's it's definitely a lot of fun. So, But then I, we you invite people and then they, they come in and then the first question is, okay, what kind of car should I buy? Mm. You know, And then they start asking questions and how do I make my car go faster? And so that's that's been the beauty of the YouTube channel is sharing my experience Everything with people there, and, yeah. and helping people I th learn. I think it's uh, I'm here to support as much as I can because I think channels like yours is, are very important for the hobby. It's not the old guy talking about technical stuff that's just so boring can put a crack hat to sleep. It's just like, oh my God. So you are sharing your excitement and even if sometimes it's not 100% correct or there's somebody else who no, has more experience than you and see oh this is not right it's your experience you're putting out your experience your experience your your, your challenges here and you're just right. sharing that thing yeah and you're probably going to have someone watching it which is in the same page as you and that's why i think grows so much yeah the one thing that i don't like is like so-called specialists doing bs and you know that it's not working they're just doing for a purpose of something yeah but you, you you're genuine like you like pete the excitement that we have with Pete Brown, yeah. Massimo Raul, uh, Travis in, in Australia, um, the, the Zotkar dude in Germany. Those guys are just sharing what they feel, what they have. It That's very important. Yeah. It's not as boring talking about new product. Or yeah, I mean, my, my rule for my channel is if I'm saying something wrong, I want somebody to help me. Okay. Like f fix what I'm doing wrong. But you don't do videos, right? Mostly it's like just lives and, and interaction with people. No, I do. I, so I, I do a live stream every Tuesday. Okay. And I usually have a few talking points, things that I want to cover, whether it's new cars that come out or I have got something new in the mail and I want to talk about it. Um, and then usually the chat takes over all the guys that show up for the chat. I mean, sometimes we have 150, 160 people. And so the conversation's everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, but we tend to get a lot of new people that ask questions. And so then you're getting people answering those questions in the chat. And I just kind of end up moderating that. But then every Saturday morning I release a video um, and it's usually either tuning or a first look at a car that I just got or unboxing. Or... Um, yeah. I, I don't do a ton of unboxing. Um, I'm pretty frugal when it comes to how I spend my money. And, and so I don't, I'm not overwhelmed by, you know, like every week I'm not getting new cars. Yeah, yeah. Um, I kind of maximize every car that I get. So I'll do a, Hey, here's the first look. This is what it's Even like. though there's so many new cars coming out, there's no it's way to keep up. Yeah. It's, it's just too much. Yeah. But, but so I try to try to do some tuning videos. I try to do, um, you know, I, I like, I, I'm super interested in controllers and how they work hmm. and, um, like the functions of some of these newer controllers coming out. Um, the synapse controller you talked about uh, when, Eric, in that interview, yeah. that looks like a fantastic, yeah, he um, puts a lot of work on that. Yeah. There's, there's a new one from Japan. Yeah. The plus come, one plus one's coming to the store. There's the, the true speed, which is one of the biggest sellers we have right now. Yeah. The I, Falcon is very nice. The the third eye is coming back. There's a new owner to the company. Yeah. So there's a lot of options for you. Plus the ones that I'm probably forgetting, but yeah. 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 So, so I'm really interested in controllers and um, there's some videos out there. Uh, a guy in the UK, Cleave Tech, mm -hmm. um, has got a whole Don't series yep. Yep, of, of re he's rebuilding a controller for somebody and he's adding some things like anti-brake and... So I'm fascinated by some of that stuff to see, does it really work? Is it just hype? Um, but the sensitivity on well, my DeFalco, I've got the 302. So it's got traction control, sensitivity, and brake. Yeah, I love that that's, controller. That's what you need. There's the 304 for one thirty second, and now we have the 306, which is something that we Jim did especially for us, which is basically 304 with a voltimeter on it. Yeah. Um, but the 304 for me is already an overkill for the kind of hobby that we have. I, I When I have to go to the track, I use a 302, which 302. is... That's, that's that's my go-to. 
Yeah. It was a 302. It's, it's amazing. Like I remember having one in Brazil and I used for like 13, 14 years. And when I have to move here, I sold it almost for the same price that I paid 13 years ago. Yeah. Little cut. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my wife, my wife sold. He's just beginning it. Yeah. So I have this big Three? house. It's so a, you have this big that. house, and you decide to 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 shoot by the pipe. Great, it's, Carlos. Yeah, yeah, Great, it's, Carlos. It's, it's, it's okay. <laughs> that was my <laughs> was my suggestion. <laughs> just blame him. Uh, <laughs> yeah, there's yeah. a but there's a bunch of people in in Europe. It's completely different. The game, Slotin Plus is coming with one that has so many ways to to fix it up. Uh, there is one called um, there is one called um, Cobra from my Italian gentleman. When we went to race the 24 hours over there, everybody was kind of using that. Uh, in Brazil, have so many more. I have the TWP from the late uh, Paulo Parolo. Uh, you have the Alvo, which I use on 124 scale race, which is just like a Gifalco, but more powerful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, it's called Alvo, very, very good control, but the same system with a network that you can change, exchange. Uh, so there's, there's many, many options. The one, the Synapse that I have is the one with the, the LCD the screen. Have you seen that? Mm -hmm. And you can control the acceleration. Yeah. Over oh, here. You need yeah. to learn how to drive first. <laughs> but that, that's, you got the painted handle on that, right? Is yeah, that I have paint? the Ayrton Senna helmet yeah, handle. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's kind of cool. Well, I was, I, I, I was curious about how that happened, um, like painting handles. And so I went down this rabbit hole of research, mm. and I found a guy online that does vinyl wraps. And so yeah. this past week, I got a couple of vinyl oh, yeah, wraps from the Falcon. Yeah. So this yeah. guy, the, the guy's from the, from Detroit, right? Um, he's from Virginia. Virginia. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So DG Custom, the design, DG, DG Designs. Custom. Very nice. Yeah. The, the ones that I have are hand painted by a guy. There's two guys in Brazil who make them. I can't remember his name. It has like a weird name, but um, there's like a. Yeah, it looks guys. fantastic. Yeah, but I, I found a way to, to get it, but it was not very easy. And there is also plastic, uh, plastic no, hydro dip. Yeah. People are doing that too. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm a guitar player, so a lot of guitars are getting hydro dip. Really? Electric guitars, yeah. Yeah, it's a popular thing to do. Well, there's a there's a guy named James Mahan who raised with us. He does his bodies. Yeah. So yeah, for, the, for cool. the Nationals, he had this full American, American theme. Yeah, that's really cool. Flag. That's really cool. So many options this hobby that's the, the coolest thing and you just find a way to do it yeah like you can you could be racing just digital but then then you change to now you know that you have a track that can, can do both but you can enjoy two but there's people who just go digital and defend the digital system there's people who just race magnets and if you talk yeah. shit about it they're just gonna go over it i remember somebody making a comment during an interview saying oh the magnets should stay at the fridge which is kind of a joke yeah. well, it's okay yeah and then this very nasty comment from a guy that we love when he's around. Uh, just, oh, 2024, you still talking about the magazine in the fridge. You should show some respect. And then just starts, but it's, yeah. Yeah. And that's kind of an unwritten rule in my, in my yeah. uh, live stream is don't be, don't make fun of people. Yeah. Um, be kind. Um, so that's a, super important to me uh, per, on, personally. And so I always talk about, if you want to run magnets, run magnets. If you don't want to run magnets, don't run magnets. Yeah. We're not going to get into argument about it. It's just... You didn't get the arguments in one thirty second about silicon tires and, and rubber tires. And people say, oh, silicon is cheating because you just have the tire ready to go. And people say, oh, you should try rubber. You're going to have more off your, out of your car if you, if you threw them well. It's a, it's a way to go. I think in a club like this with a plastic track, if you put some, some sets of silicones, whatever brand it is, you're fine. Yeah, that's what we run on here. You're silicone. fine. Yeah, keep cleaning and yeah. that's it. Yeah. Of course, if you're going to go one step ahead, the, the, the rubber, I think you're going to get a little bit of better performance if you do that well. Right. It's going to take so much time and it's going to be so much harder for all the, the, the club members to match. Yeah. Right. Uh, we have a club in, in a lake called the Far Out Club that I always mention because it's one of the best things that ever happened to slot cars in America. Uh, they have been around for 15 years, 20 years maybe. And they have a couple of classes. They, they run urethane tires mm -hmm. because that was a choice from 20 years ago and they don't want to change because everybody now has the car set up for that. But those tires are so hard to get around. It's so I, I, I believe that I have some experience. And if someone comes up with a car that was set up 15 years ago, they're just running up by me. <laughs> and I can't keep up. Yeah. So right. this is the kind of stuff that you might, if you change the silicones or like a standard rubber, maybe help. Yeah. So the goal is that. The goal is just to try to, to, to keep cool and everybody together and don't have somebody who has an advantage just to go for it. Yeah. So many ways to enjoy the hobby. Yeah. I'm hosting a race next month. Okay. Um, October 19th here. 
and it's for all the guys that are headed to Michigan for the the NSR national okay, race. So it's kind so, of a test run. Yeah. So <laughs> we, we, we did it this past Saturday at another track. Okay. Um, our buddy Greg um, down in Middletown, Ohio. And uh, so there were eight or nine, nine of us that showed up for that. Mm -hmm. And so I figured about the same number will show up for this. And it'll just be a different layout test, see how your car performs. Yeah. And it's plastic, not share, share knowledge. And yeah. those guys that are a little farther behind on their tuning, help them get where they need to be and Yeah, you should get someone from there to help you out. Give a couple of calls for a top driver. Find out who is the top driver Yeah, and start to ask questions. So who's setting up this car here? Can you give me? <laughs> well, see, I don't know that anybody knows because they're going to run the new Scale Auto track. And oh, so, yeah, it's a plastic track now. Yeah, yeah that's true. So yeah. so they are... They, so you're so very they, similar here. You, yeah. you, it's going to be a good test track here. Yeah, um, that Scale Auto track seems to have a lot of grip, though, compared mm. to Carrera. Maybe a little bit more. A little Maybe more. a little bit yeah. more. But if, this, this, if the tires are the same, you're good. Yeah, just practice. Yeah, we have a we have a series of videos. I don't know if you if you know. Every time that somebody wins a race with a different car, we open up and show the car. Yeah. So that has been very helpful too, not only for the local racers, but people all around the country who can see what are the tricks and. They're always discovering new things. They're always calling the gray areas, and I have to shut them down. Yeah. So every race, like right now, I have a car on my 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 desk from um, Dan Tufts. He won the Canon race with a Porsche 908 from NSR. Okay. And as soon as I put it on my my desk, we, we usually we do the video just after the race, but we were busy this week. And another race came out. Did you see that car? And I say, yeah, I tech. I know, I know. Yeah, but did you see that car? I say, what happens? There's no paint on it. What do you mean? He just put like a sticker strike and, and a, a, a stripe as a sticker, three numbers, and that's it. I said, no, I can't believe it. So I look at I knew that it was white, but I look at close, there's no paint. No paint. <laughs> so, so I go to the rule book and say, must have a livery. doesn't say must, must have, have paint. paint. Yeah. So that's something that I'm going to change because the guy sort of saved like a gram and a half, maybe a gram. Yeah. But that probably that's probably a lot. Yeah, that's a lot. That's a good advantage for him. Um, I appreciate the fact um, your coverage of the races has been fantastic. That's on Carlos. Yeah, That's on well me. done, Carlos. Um, and I really and I was I tried to mention that in the live stream because it it really uh, for people who are new to the hobby to be able to watch racing at that level with the commentary and with with everything and just all yeah. the camera angles it really puts slot cars in a great light. Yeah, and I, I there are a lot of people that when you say oh I race slot cars. And they're like, oh, yeah, the thing I did when I was a kid, I'm like, you, you watch need to this. see it. You need to see it. <laughs> yeah. And so, you know, you can go watch that video and really get a, a good uh, view. But I, it's it's still never going to be as good as coming down here, grabbing a controller oh, yeah. and yeah, throwing somebody yeah, on the yeah, track, yeah. But, right? But, but it's still like we, that was the plan since the beginning when I, I, I spoke with Scott, the owner, to, to put a track there. Because if you're selling this product, we need to represent some why. And nothing better than have a track to show how it works and have people enjoying and have new people joining. So that was the goal on the track. And then after that, when we start to, to have this idea to have the cameras and everything else, we started with four with an automatic flip. If you see the early ones, it's kind of four cameras, but you can follow the race. But for the National as well, I started to do something different. And uh, we, f we figured out, okay, let's figure out. I think we have like 12 cameras yeah. plus a wireless one so people could do like interviews and stuff. Mark was dressed as an Andrew Grant yeah, yeah. yeah, Some people yeah. got the reference. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, that was great. Yeah, and uh, we got uh, Doug and Ian from from the UK because I noticed that those guys brought so much fun for the UK festival. They always have a track. They always yelling. People having fun. If you have the, if you see the boots of the many the bigger manufacturers, they're just bad. And yeah. Ian's and Doug's boots, they're always like having fun and giving prizes. So I say, okay, I need those guys there. Yeah, that was so, a good choice. They they were fun. I was I know it was a long weekend for them, but they they really yeah. did a fantastic job and. Well, um, good imagine, guys. imagine for us. Good people. If you feel, if you feel oh, like yeah, they were oh, working. No, I know. They're just sitting down there, man. <laughs> we're putting the boot together with no experience in wood. We're just <laughs> cutting wood to, there. I didn't mean to offend you. Okay, Mark. good. Like, uh, that wasn't, that so wasn't what I was trying to Cut two days say. ago, me and him was just like <laughs> hammering <laughs> fingers and and almost like, oh my God, uh, I did it again, right? Uh, no, I, yeah. I, know what it, I know what kind of work it takes to put on a race here so i can imagine a national yeah, level race yeah like we don't sleep we really don't for sure. two two or three days we don't sleep yeah uh on the day the, the, the worst day is the day between qualifying because we do qualify on saturday and the race on sunday but there's so much preparation in between and now i invented that we should have pictures of the driver and the car have you noticed that on the last mm -hmm. one yeah so that's all done on the day before 
Yeah. So all those graphics a lot of work. <laughs> is a lot of work. A lot of work. It's not only just graphics, like photoshopping pictures and trying to find the correct graphics, and then you have the time of the qualifying over there. So in in a, in a real TV channel, you probably have like ten people working on those things. Right. Over there, it's just me and him. Yeah. And we have John taking care of the front desk. We have Mark who helps. Kristen doesn't. He, she goes on the on the on the big events. Yeah. And uh, sometimes Mark is racing, so he's not there yeah. and we have dennis who is there he's temporary he, he's part-time so he goes on thursday but he's not there at the track working other than that it's me and him picking up people at the airport f- figuring figuring out broadcasting right. doing graphics pictures it's it's tough. So, so do you miss racing i don't think i should race over there yeah and i understand why yeah. you wouldn't but so, you... there's no good outcome if i win they're gonna say of course he's always here if i lose how come we lose he's always here so there's no I feel that pressure here being a YouTube. Oh, on YouTube. Having a channel. I go to a race and if I don't perform well, then it's like oh, yeah. he doesn't know what he's talking about. No, but that's 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 my thing. I'm sorry to brag, but if I go to the race, I know that I'm gonna perform well. So I'm that that I'm confident <laughs> enough confident enough that's to fair. say no, that's uh, how I can how I long handle have, that. How long have you been racing? Uh, since I was twelve. With a couple of good titles. Yeah. 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 I'm very confident. I can walk yeah. into any room and I can fix it. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's um so maybe I need you to take a look at a couple of cars before you do <laughs> There you go. There you go. <laughs> like yesterday uh, <laughs> a couple a couple of days ago we were at the G, uh, at a Jim Allard's track. Have you heard about him? Yeah. The guy who has this huge track has been working for 4 years. And he started to give us uh talk about talk about oh there's a difference between racers and speed guys and modelists. And he was going to the modelist kind of not but Saying, look, there's guys here just come up, watch the fastest time. And it was just about to happen. <laughs> What's the track record? I'm going to break this right now. I can see it. I can do it. <laughs> Remember? He was, he was behind me. Oh, no, uh, Jimmy. No. no, just don't go there. That's funny. So I always try to, to make, a, make a dance. Yeah. <laughs> Which is fun. Yeah. Um, the other day, we were in New York at the Racia. Oh, yeah. Good guys from Racia. John and Tara. So they're fixing the braids, and I went to try the track. It's like a nice hill climb, very tall, and that I never driven before. So there's this guy, I don't remember his name. He has his box out. And I said, can I try one of the lanes? So he, they clear the tools, so I try one lane. And the guy was picking up some of his cars to give to me, and he was just like, mm, try this one. <laughs> so he gave me one that I knew that was a fast, and I just started to drive. And I said, can I try the other ones? He was just like, no, 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 you're fine with this one. So he didn't want to give me the fast one. So That's funny. It's funny. I, I, my experience is I've been to probably, I race in probably ten to twelve countries, mm-hmm. and uh, it's it's my hobby. It's my, yeah. my passion to go there sure. and figure out the car. So I yeah. have no problem. The confidence is there. Yeah. I don't know how the results the, the results are there, but <laughs> the confidence it is. Um, well, you've started to some, develop some characters though. You've got Ian. You've got. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. you've got a lot of guys that are, you know, Todd that are right there at the top yeah, every yeah, time yeah. they show up to track. We so used to I, have was, re- I was waiting for you to have to like remind them that you own the track, like you, like you're the no, guy. No, no, I cannot. No, no, I'm not the guy. Like the, the level that Ian, Ian, uh, Cedric, uh, Herman, Todd, yeah, uh, Rick Jokan, who used to race with us, Eddie Shore, which is one of my favorite drivers, is still the level that they, those guys are. I can, I can keep a give a couple laps because I've, I've i've been out of racing for five years now yeah so i can i can match their, their time but i don't think i can have the pace anymore i need a lot of practice to have the pace yeah. if you see races like uh last race from Ian, he was just he was just a parade for him the car was so good he was just keeping up keeping it keep it going he yeah. was not overdriving he was just keeping it so it's very hard to get to that level yeah, yeah i i would need a lot of practice and they're going to need a lot of races to get close to them and i don't, don't think i can yeah uh the other point we have got new guys new uh like dan Tufts. uh dan was second on the last race on the mrs lot car race and he was overdriving the car he was trying to beat the hell of it because he couldn't keep the pace and he was just yeah. passing by and so then smooth. was the guy who on his or last can am race he won without crashing. It was the very first time that somebody won a race without crashing. So never came out of the slot. Yeah, but That's but impressive. then on the Mars Lot car, his 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 car was a little lower than ours, so he needed to overdrive to try to, to reach them. Yeah, but even though Ian was like eight laps ahead or something, so it was yeah. most it's incredible. Yeah. So again, I think I'm could I could be a very good driver, but I'm yeah. completely out of shape now. Yeah. Uh, what happened? There was a Tuesday night. There was missing a couple guys, and I'm joining. 
with the oh, yeah, that was fun. yeah with his car as a loner, yeah. and uh, I remember going to the last hit and I was placed third. And then when I pass behind him, and he says something like, "Oh, they're schooling you." <laughs> Dude, he po so, poked so, the bear. He so poked the bear. so from the last the heat, I came from third, like three laps ahead or two laps ahead, and I finished five feet behind the, the guy who won. So I <laughs> got back the second and almost there, and it's like, right? Yeah. Oh, you God, only don't do that. And I, and I broke the track record. And yeah. I broke the track record. Yeah. That's so great. yeah, that's, that's that's my way to enjoy. So that's my sure. way to enjoy, and I think people need to find it. If it's collecting, or if it's just like Jimmy working for four years in a track, this beautiful place, or just like you putting trying to put a club together and figure out your electronics and discovering new things at the time. Oh yeah, and sharing it. and sharing in your YouTube video and get more information live, which is something that we couldn't have in the eighties and the nineties. No, not not at all. That's kind of cool. It is very cool. It's a great time to be in the hobby for yeah. sure. Yeah. Do, do you feel pos positive about the future of the hobby? I think so. Not just because I'm in it, but okay. but I I think that. I mean, the key is is finding the youth, right? And, yeah. And and drawing on, um, bringing new people and younger people into the hobby, and and let them find the joy of grabbing a controller and throwing a car around a track. Um, I think the key will be how do we keep it fun for people. And be competitive, because I think that that is a hard, I, mean, I saw it in RC cars, and I think this, because of the price point of this hobby, like you can go fast and you don't have to spend a ton of money. No. You can really manage that really well and have a fast car, have a good controller. Um, the in, the point of entry is so inexpensive. Yeah. I and think if you have a, a local key. club, it's so easy to join. Everybody's welcoming. Yeah, right. And and that's what we've discovered. We've we've been to a handful of tracks now, kind of all over southern Ohio. And we've you know, we've had guys that are like, Hey, I've got one in my basement. Had no idea that the guy ever, you know, people I've known most of my life. Mm -hmm. Um, there's a guy just a couple blocks away that has um an American uh orange track. Okay. It's a oval? In, uh no, it's um uh, American trying, models. It, yeah, it's the um um uh, Ogilvy. Oh, it's like an Ogilvy, but it's it's the um, who made blue the company that made the blue track, the King. Okay. Um, I forget. Uh, it's called the Monarch. Oh, okay, so one of the American models, the original yeah, ones, yeah. right? And so he has a Monarch in his garage in pieces. Oh. And love to. Um, there used to be at at one point there were three slot car tracks downtown Chillicothe. Really, there was three three races. Was two two eight lane Stromberg. So you mean three tracks in the same place? Uh, no, three, three stores. Yep. Oh my god! And then um, this orange, this monarch was there. Was in one of the other stores. Yeah. yeah. Joe Johnson, his father used to work for that company selling right. those tracks. Yeah. It's probably a track that came out of his Joe Johnson family. Yeah. yeah. It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. We went to Modelville a couple of days ago. Yeah. Modelville Hobbies in, in Boston, Ashland. Yeah. And they have a couple of more, the purple miles there. So the yeah, that's miles. incredible. That's so, Bucket list for me. Yeah. yeah. To be there and then run if you put in the street, the car just goes to another code, another zip code, and then comes back five minutes later. <laughs> oh, the car's here. <laughs> how, how are the sight lines on that? I mean, it's. There, there's a couple of, a couple, like the first finger, you cannot see it. Yeah. You can, if you're on a red lane, you cannot see only if you're very tall. And they used to have seats like stools too, for you to go on. So it's literally like you go in the car, and if, if you have in your memory how the Blue King works, and I race a lot on mm -hmm. Blue Kings. Okay, should it be back? And it's not. It just yeah. keep going. And then when it comes back, you do the first finger, the second one, you think it's the donut. It's not the donut. It's another finger. So you go yeah. in, and the donut has like a weird straight in the middle. It's very weird. But it drives like a blue, blue king. Yeah. Yeah. And they have right there, they have the G7 blue king. And okay. we, we recently acquired the G8, Gary Gurdjian's G8 from Buena nice. Park. Uh, we really still cool. don't know what to do with that thing, but we have it. We preserve at least. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It has been hard to find uh, blue king bracers nowadays only wing cars and and for the wing cars they go to the more modern contracts the g12 g30 is 13 is whatever they call and uh so the g8s and the, they're a little slower they don't want to race that so it's it's if you put it together it's going to be for retro racing yeah is it too big of a track for 
for these type of cars? I mean, the 130 seconds. No, it's scan? not. Uh, there's a couple of things that you need to do. The first one is you need to clean. So they, those cars, they're not going to run very well on, on glue. Yeah. And the second thing is the lane difference. It's just too wide. So Carrera, I think it's four inches. Yeah. So that's going to be four and a half or something like that. Yeah. Or, or, or three and a half. This is three and a half and, and one through four is four. That's why we did the, the, the check electric dreams. We did the same as Carrera. Uh, so we can race. 132nd, 134 uh, replica cars, so we can bo- it's get a little tight yeah. with a with a with a 124, 124, but but, but we use do, yeah. We so if you get a Scalextrix or a Polycar, it's much more yeah. narrow. So we have more contact, which is fun too. Yeah, I I do enjoy your layout. I think it's a fantastic layout. It took a dreams. long time for us to design. It's most of my boss on that. Yeah, because my my job was to find a way to fit that there. And I have to keep in mind that we still didn't have the shipping department in the back, so all the packages were coming from there. So I have to find a way to have at least 15 inches all around it, so I can move a forklift or a, or a jacket uh, or a pallet jack. And uh, I came with a bunch of designs that will fit. Uh, so if you see, when you have the asses, you are only 11 uh, feet long, but when you get to here, it's a little bit bigger. Yeah. And if you're there, you can see there's level, so there's elevation, so you can see the car coming. Yeah. Uh, the the guard there's a little little de- details that probably nobody knows the guard rail it's it's lowered so kids can see the cars so even a kid like like four feet tall they can see the car for the whole track yeah and Scott came up with some very good uh, improvements on the design and uh, I was fortunate enough to find Gary Girding about to get retired so he built the track for us here in Omaha ship it out yeah. came to put it together. That's and cool. now we have a track that I believe it's one of the best tracks for the second race because you can push the car, you have the straight line, you have the ass that even the, the professional drivers, they every time that they go there, around there, it's, it's a different, different approach. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's a very cool track. It's a very cool track. It's, it's big enough. It's only 94 feet, but it's for one of the second race. It's, it's pretty good. It's fast. Yeah. Yeah. When are you going to come here? Now I'm jealous well, because I invited you. Can you show that I, thing over there? That's right. I invited you for the for the. I, I, well, but the problem with that is the week before I was in San Diego know, with my I know, family. I, I was joking. Um, we had a we had a wedding, and uh, I I tried every way just to come up because I wanted to see the store. The store, yeah. And uh, I just we like, couldn't break away from the wedding party and everything that was going on for those. It was a short trip. You should have booked the flight back from LA. Yeah. Then you that, well, we, we need to be there. It's like five minutes swung, from the airport. Swung by. And I just wanted to see see your place, see the track in person. Yeah. Um, it would have been fun to jump on and run a few laps and try it out. Uh, we have a friend that has a beautiful wood track. Um, he's a little over an hour away from here. That's um, a six lane. Um, he's got a garage. It's a beautiful place. And uh, uh, we really enjoy that wood track. That. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Do you think your future here is going to be a wooden track? Um, you have I, the space. I, I I do have the space. I think. Um, yeah. I, probably. I I will tell you that I'm where the test track is in the other room. I'm building an oval, okay. a wood oval test track. Okay. So that I can do some more of the scratch building because okay. I really did enjoy enjoy that enjoy that. Yeah, um, and now that I've seen pictures of your chassis, oh, my, my oh man, yeah. that's I'm, those I'm, are incredible. I'm very proud about that. <laughs> yeah. So, um, but that that's going to be a four lane over there. That'll be uh, fourteen. Just by like uh, six. Harry has one. Uh, yeah, a little like Harry's, yeah. uh, but about fourteen foot long, six foot wide, so four lane. Um, just so my, we can we can have some fun with that. Um, I, I like the career track. I like the fact that I can change it around if I want to. But we're pretty much we love this layout. It's pretty cool. This modified. I want to get it all later on. Oh yeah. And uh, it's it's a what's, lot of fun to get around. What's the track record? <laughs> what's the track record? <laughs> um, and then we've been uh, testing some new software for lap counting, and uh, it's it's it's. it's Who design cool. it? Um, uh, Patrick Langa, and he's uh, it's called Fast Laps. Okay. And um, he's he's been working on the project for almost ten years, and uh, he reached out to me about a year ago and said, "Hey, would you like to try this on your track? I noticed you did a DIY uh, Arduino." Uh-huh. Um, track counting uh, project, and I think this would work great with it. And so I've been playing with that, and um, it's he's about to release it. It's really getting close. It's it's solid. We used it this past week. Um, it's a lot of it's, a, it's really good. This is the practice screen that you're seeing here, but the uh, is there a lot of um, uh, hardware involved? Um, you can use TrackMate. Okay. If you have TrackMate hardware, um, there's a couple other options, and then um, you can use our, an Arduino. And um, photo eyes or uh, IR uh, break 
sensors. Whatever. Does that work for digital too, or is just or is a sensor yeah. passing the? He he had um, the software will do digital. Oh, nice. Yeah, so it's digital and analog. But very, very nice. I can give you a run through when you oh, run yeah, some yeah. laps. Let's, let's do some laps. Yeah. Only if you tell me the track record and give me I a will. good car. I'll let you. I'll let you <laughs> try to break the track record. <laughs> Man, thank you very much for having us. Uh, yeah, thanks for we, making we, the trip to Chillicothe. We're doing this East Coast trip. It's it's very enjoyable for us. Uh, we, we I need to confess, we're a little tired. I should be home right now. But yeah, it's it has been very enjoyable. We've seen so many people. We've met some 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 so many good guys and. And I, I think I came out of this very with a very positive view of what we're doing and uh, and what we've been working on. And thank you for the nice comments about the broadcasting. This is our background, so we try yeah. to, to push a little bit more. Next one, you're gonna see more stuff. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's that's the way that we're doing, and 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 I feel very energized by everything that people are doing here in the East Coast. And we're gonna come back, and we have more work to do, a lot of work to do. Yeah. But man, thank you again. Beautiful yeah. house. Oh, Congratulations. Thanks. And I heard that you do most of the job here. So <laughs> I can only see your craftsmanship on here on the track, on the cars. Or the, for the very first drive on the hard body, that's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. More to go. It's, yes, it's going gonna to take 20 hours on each chassis, but it's, 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 it's okay. You, you feel <laughs> grateful at the end of it. I, was, I, was, I, I learned how to solder on that. So it looks oh, pretty oh, bad. good. So look, it's looking very good then. And now that you have the kids out, you have the space, you move to a bigger house, right. they must be pissed. Yeah. Well, actually, they love, uh, they'll be home um, here next next week, week after. Um, they're, both the the same, they're both in the same place. Yeah, so they're both in Colorado. They're helping each other? Fort just Collins, the, the one yeah. That, okay, good. Yeah, and um, my oldest, she's married, and my youngest, uh, she moved in to help them save some money. And, <laughs> oh, God, uh, get but, out of my hair. But, 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 when, but when they come home... It's dad. Are we having a race night? They love nice. to come down, nice. and so that's that's my favorite thing to do. Is when they come home, we jump on the track, and it'll be two o'clock in the morning. We're still down here running very laps. Cool. Man, again, congratulations! Yeah, Thank you very much for having Appreciate us. It. Thanks, Marco. Anything you needed, we were here to, for you. We, we want to support. We want to to make it grow, and we want to have more views on your videos, on my videos. And I want to have Zlotkar culture, let's say this way, spread. And I think Zlotkar is definitely back. Yeah. 